Salut. Uh, good day, everyone. My name is Veronica, and I'm studying environmental engineering in my master. And I have the pleasure today to introduce a plant a seed to you. But before I'm going to tell you all about the project's vision, um, the goals, and most important, our passion that is driving us for this project, uh, I would like to ask you a mini question. When was the last time you got super dirty while digging in earth? Um, maybe playing with earthworms, running around in puddles, picking flowers or mushrooms, and just probably, let's say, unintentionally connecting with earth. What if I told you Plant a Seed will give you the opportunity to do all this again, plus gain credits at the same time and experience sustainability on campus? Gandhi once said, to forget how to dig the earth and to tend the soil is to forget ourselves. With that in mind, I would like to finally tell you what plant a seed actually is. So, um, yeah, plant a seed, um, I would like to start with the what. Um, all in all, we have created a um, four years plan that intends to be a pilot project. Um, generally, we aim to develop an integrated urban gardening concept to be installed at TUM. And with this project, we want to raise awareness and um, yeah, a lot of enthusiasm uh, for sustainability and environmental protection. This means in particular that um, in the first year, we want to um, build raised beds and uh, set them on campus um, and grow vegetables. Um, just to show in the first year, it's just going to be a few um, uh, race beds only. And we just want to show that we can manage the situation. We're not going to let the vegetables die um, during semester holidays. And yeah, with every year, we want to um, build more and more race beds. And um, at one point, maybe also growing crops on ground and expanding to other term, com, uh, term locations. Uh, further, we want to develop sustainable irrigation strategies and long-term supply the demand of TUM students with organically grown food. And um, most important, train the TUM community on urban gardening. So our idea is that everything we learn, we want to give out into the world. Um, so that people really start growing their own vegetables on their balconies, in their backyards, or wherever they live. Who are we? Uh, well, we're a team of highly motivated students of the Environmental Department of the Student Council. Um, maybe you've heard it under the name Umweltreferat. And um, we're collaborating with the Center of Land, Water and Environmental Risk Management of the Chair of Land Management of TUM and several other TUM chairs. Why are we doing this? Um, well, simply because there's no planet B. We need to act now. And um, yeah, we want to take action and start transforming sustainability into real practical experiences and uh, measures on campus um, while creating new strategies for climate actions by combining interdisciplinary knowledge with social responsibility. And how are we planning to transform this idea? Well, um, we want to combine the water energy food sectors and unite the human resources of TUM with the study expertise of different departments. So currently there are 42,705 students enrolled at TUM. Obviously not all of them are going to participate. However, if only 1% is joining in the project, we have over 400 people and volunteers um, who yeah, could help this project succeed. Further, there are so many different studies and um, yeah, we want to combine all of that to um, transform this idea into an educational and interdisciplinary research project for sustainability. At this point, I would like to remind all of us that urban gardening is not a new crazy thing. We just got disconnected with nature. With the progressing industrialization, food production and urban areas were increasingly separated. Rapid growth of population coming along with increasing density of urban and suburban areas, green infrastructure was just not a priority anymore. But this changed in the late 20th century, where urban farming became a symbol of community spirit and environmental sustainability. 
Uh, here are just a few examples of uh, how urban gardening can be very, very successful. And um, I would like to name the um, guerrilla gardens in New York City, as they are often named as the origin of urban gardening in modern history. And here, a small group of people came together because they got tired of watching the decay of their city. And they just started planting seeds on literally every corner of empty buildings. And this inspired others to help, so the community grew rapidly. And um, today, they have over 600 community gardens. Another amazing example is Detroit with over 1,400 gardens. The Princess Gardens in Berlin are also an amazing example of how urban gardening is addressing not only the local food production, but also promoting cultural exchange and getting rid of social restrictions. Um, the, the last example is the um, project Querbeeten um, from the Katholische Hochschulgemeinde in Munich. And here's um, also a tiny group of students got together and um, yeah, started planting uh, um, raised beds on campus with vegetables. And there are so many examples all around the world and um, that urban gardening can be super successful and most important, create vibrant community gardens. And um, Geichinger Freising are also another great example, but I haven't, um, I don't have pictures yet, so I couldn't include them. Um, so you've probably noticed by now, hopefully, that this project is so much more than just another nice idea. This project is supported by an incredible amount of passion and energy. And yeah, we really want to make a change. We need to have this big vision um, if we want to overcome existing barriers. So what we want to do is literally and physically planting seeds, but we also want to grow these seeds on different levels. I would like to share this nice little image in my head with you. So just imagine these seeds are growing into a beautiful plant that reaches at, le reaches at least into different directions. What we want is to address so many different things with this project that um, I try to visualize all of these directions into um, yeah, the flower that you can see here. And I'm going to start with the participation and um, impact. So we want to back up this project with an educational and interdisciplinary research approach. That means that we would like to create a platform that brings students and professors of different chairs together. This way students would have um, yeah, very cool topics for their thesis and um, study projects, and they could collect data for real, um, from a real project um, where they are actively involved in on campus. And um, there are literally topics for all kinds of studies. Um, just to give you a few examples, so um, yeah, for instance, the hydrogeology chair could, um, could ask students for, to develop sustainable um, irrigation strategies. The informatics students could develop apps um, for a better organization. The um, soil science studi students could um, start with soil fertility studies. The architecture students could, um, de could de um, design and um, yeah, plan the gardens. So as you can see, there are so many options for literally all kinds of studies. Um, another thing that we want to accomplish with this project is a social movement. We don't want to just fulfill simple measurements for sustainability. Uh, we want to create a community spirit um, by organizing team spirit events like cabin weekends in the mountains. Um, yeah, with the motto connect without Wi-Fi, um, where we are going to plan um, on developing this project um, in nature for nature. Um, obviously, this whole project promotes intercultural exchange and um, yeah, we want to take our social commitment seriously. Um, another point that we would like to address are workshops for the Tung community. So everything we're going to learn in the first year, we want to pack in workshops and yeah, hand it out to other students, the staff of the UN and so on. Um, also, the student health and student and staff health um, and well-being we would like to address. Um, a lot of students living in student dorms with eight square meters. And this project could give students a safe place to study outside in a green area. 
uh, with lots of fresh air in the middle of the city. Um, last but not least, we would like um, yeah, to do outreach work, um, which means giving workshops for schools, kindergartens, etc. And yeah, connecting generations. Furthermore, um, I'm going to explain you about the, sorry, something went wrong here. Um, no, all good, sorry. Um, so furthermore, I would like to um, explain you more about the collaboration and partnerships. So um, first I would like to um, tell you or show you which groups um, would be involved. So for the people, it would be students, local residents, volunteers, visitors, um, stakeholders would be Tom's um, support organizations, local farmers and gardeners, city councils, and um, the resources are uh, one really interesting thing because um, I'm just going to mention that. Um, so, yeah, it would be um, experts of different fields of studies, um, which uh, of different study fields, which are you. Um, for the um, volunteers, um, access to land and water, um, supplies like seeds, tools, materials, um, and funded donations. So. As you um, might notice, we have everything available at home. Um, except the funds and donations, we will have that too. Um, we're currently working on that, but everything else is already fixed. Um, so yeah, further I would like to introduce some collaboration partners that we have in mind, um, the local and regional initiatives. Um, we have one um, Munich, uh, urban gardening initiative called Oplands is, which is already supporting us um, with all of their knowledge. And um, yeah, Akapause is another collaboration partner we would like to work with um, once we get the funding clear. Um, they would help us with professional cultivation plans. Um, further, we would like to collaborate with the Studentenwerk München, which is um, responsible for the Uni Mensas. Um, as we would like to do a cooperation with the harvest so that we could sell or yeah, give them our harvest um, for a local and organic grown um, yeah, food for students. Um, furthermore, uh, other unis um, should be involved. Um, first of all, obviously LMU, um, KHG, Katholische Hochschulgemeinde, um, and also other unit universities. And one thing I'm really excited about is um, that we're planning international workshops and projects. And as this is so absolutely exciting, um, I would like to um, introduce two projects we have in mind um, that we would like to cooperate with. Um, at this point, I gotta say, we still need funding, um, but our idea is generally to extrapolate our experiences and learn from other experiences. Um, so for this purpose, we have these two organizations in mind, and um, I'm gonna explain you um, a little bit about the iStupa program in, um, in, in Ladakh. And um, I think Dr. Doreen is already telling us, um, telling you more about um, the project in Mexico. So I'm gonna start with the iStupa program, uh, which is absolutely amazing. And this project focuses on building artificial glaciers um, like ice stupas in Ladakh. And Ladakh is a trans Himalayan mountain desert in the extreme north of villages uh, of India, with villages located at 2,700 to 4,000 meters of altitude. Humans are uh, mostly settling along glacial, glacial streams where they can build canals um, for melting water that flows towards the desert to grow crops. So due to climate change and disappearing glaciers, most villages face extreme water shortage, especially in April and May. And in winter, however, when there are no farming activities, these streams are flowing steadily without being used of, um, to anyone. So they, they had this amazing idea to build these artificial ice stupas to store the water that would normally get lost. These stupas are shaped the way that they do not melt until late spring, so when they're in desperate need of water. And um, then they are melting and provide enough water at the right time. So you can see on the um, right picture, um, in the right corner, um, 
there are 5,000 trees that were planted by the local community and are watered by the steepest. And our idea is now that a few selected students from the Plant C team could travel there and learn more about irrigation strategies. In exchange, we could provide training for cultivation plants using the principles of permaculture. And some students could also take this trip to perform data collection on related research projects. And um, yeah, the other um, project is um, in Mexico. So in so Chimoku, I practice this work. <laughs> and um, yeah, it contains, um, uh, they did an amazing project there, but I'm not gonna go into detail here. Um, so what we kind of want to do with the cooperation with Mexico is also planning to boost um, yeah, capacity building of the um, um, indigenous women and sustainable, sustainable agriculture practices. Then um, I would like to um, also go super quick over the ecological benefits of this project. Um, you probably all heard about the urban heat island effect and it is a phenomenon that cities are becoming incredible hot due to climate change and um, sorry due to the increasing sealed um, increasing sealed surfaces in city cities and obviously due to climate change as well um, so yeah here you can see a map of uh, munich where the correlation of green spaces and the temperature is illustrated and um, the flag marks the location of the Tom city campus and as you can see the city um, campus is in the hottest area and i don't know if you've been there in um, on a hot summer day but it is literally no pleasure to hang out there um, so more green spaces would counteract this urban heat island effect and also provide habitat for biodiversity and interactions between biological and physical systems um, another thing i would like to address is um, the un sustainability development goals and um, you've probably also heard about these um, there are 17 goals outline um, the major global yeah, goals and challenges we face at the moment and um, basically how we can make our world a better place in ecological, economic um, but also in social terms until 2030. And the city of Munich has, started, um, has stated that they will support ideas and actions that are in favor of these 17 goals. And as plant a seed, would cover five of the UN sustainability goals, we definitely have a high chance to get support from the city council. And um, I do not have time to go over all these goals, um, but if you have questions on um, how we can address them, I'm more than happy to answer them um, per mail um, later. Yeah, and obviously uh, maybe one thing we're not going to change the urban climate with a few raised baths, um, that's for sure. But remember, if there are many small gardens all over the city, it's going to end up. It's going to end up. So um, we can definitely make a change. Um, maybe a quick, um, quick thing to our current stage right now. So um, currently we're a, a team of 35 students. And the last few months we have, uh, we have worked on the project plan, reports, finding sponsors, etc. cetera. And um, last week we got the final okay from the Tom Presidium. And um, we also got the okay from the building management um, that we are ready to start. Um, last thing is that we need to find funding. Um, and I would like, I, I hope that we have that until the end of the year, so we can pursue with our original plan to build the rice baths in January and start planting in March. And um, yes, most important, how can you participate? So um, I'm gonna be absolutely excited if um, yeah you're interested in joining the team. Um, if you are, please send me an email um, to becca at fs.tom.de. Um, the email is written here. Um, yeah, I'm gonna add you to our Telegram group and um, then you could join one or more groups and just get started. Here are just a, a few um, groups that um, we're yeah, planning to form. Obviously, um, there's 
much more groups needed um, to um, for the organization of the uh, project. So yeah, you can bring in your ideas. Um, you can get super creative and. I'll be more than happy to welcome you in our team. Well, thank you so much for your attention and um, yeah, hope to see you super soon. <laughs> Bye.